Welcome back. Um, what I'm showing you on the screen here is the first recording on this, dash 1, and this will be the same title with a, a dash 2, and uh, I'll minimize that now. To go back to our instructional sheet, uh, we had ended the last one by doing the bar plot of C. So we brought in a table, we transposed it, uh, then we calculated the means, uh, uh, and that table was called C and that's what we performed the bar plot on. What we want to proceed now is to give it a little bit of color and some labels uh, and then we'll calculate uh, the standard error of the mean and add the error bars to it. Before that however I'm going to uh, scroll down here and switch to my selection. This is the original code from the source um, this uh, second, second source here was that it? Well, one of these two. I apologize for not recalling here on the spot. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was provided in such a way that you set up a table of means, uh, you name your columns, you identify the standard errors, and then you go through everything that we're going to go through uh, to plot it. So you can just copy those. I'm doing a control C to copy. Go back to R, and you can just do a control V and it ran all of that and what popped up over here on the side was our squirrel rabbit and chipmunk and uh, the there's no labels uh, on the y-axis but anyway we've seen how to add those and we have the error bars up and down with uh, the horizontal uh, tags on them as well and um, if you'll recall where we're going to end up is here, and there's a problem somehow in the, the width of these uh, horizontal bars on our uh, error bars. So it looks great for the, uh, the other column there in R. Uh, if you just got a couple columns, but if you've got a lot of them, uh, we need to figure out how to shorten that up. Anyway, that's where we're headed. I'm going to pull that aside so that I can... Uh, find out where we were and pick up and complete the rest of the code. So if you want to type along with me or take notes. <clears throat> Remember we had calculated a table of C that was the means for our columns in our original um, table which we uh, transposed and <clears throat> when we put in this command of T apply uh, in the, to the Z, the transpose table, uh, for each of these columns, uh, then it knew that this was the label. Okay, the, the label will always come at the end in a sequence like this, is what I'm understanding. Uh, and then the, the vector, the numerical values, would uh, be listed earlier. So that seems to be the, the tendency in these. Uh, uh, you can search further on your own. And then this is the command that was given, right? So perform calculates the mean on this column and then use this to label them. Okay, so that's where we are. Uh, let's uh, do a bar plot where we put some color in there. So bar bar plot again of C, but now we're going to say make the columns equal to open quotation blue close quotation, and then axis dot LTY equals 1. That's supposed to keep the uh, axes uh, proportional as I recall. Trying to make sure that everything shows up on it is what, how I understood what it's doing. Our X label again equals open quotation. I'm using an uppercase for the label gene here. And we'll make it genes or gene I guess. Probably gene because we're showing them one at a time. Y label equals value. We used level before, but that's fine. And then here we're saying arbitrary units. You know, what are our levels or values of gene expression? Close quotation marks and then close parentheses. Now when we hit this, over to the right popped up a nice little graph and we're blue. <clears throat> now we're going to keep this one going as long as this is open, if we do some other things and refer to this, no, excuse me, we will uh, uh, 
we'll we'll get rid of this one. We'll use another code uh, to make it active, and I'll explain as we go. But anyway, it just shows you how we can do a little bit, right? So you see our y-axis label, variable uh, the value in arbitrary units, and then gene down on the bottom. Uh, we still have this problem of uh, too large of a font, you know, how to change that. I know how to work with that readily and the other software packages I use, so just finding the right code in R. Uh, but anyway, we're getting there. Things are looking better. Well, now what we uh, need to do is calculate the standard error of the mean. So first we need the um, standard deviation. And um, I'm just keeping these to one letter table names. Uh, D is going to be our standard deviation table, left arrow, T apply, open parentheses. We're going to the Z, and now we're identifying our uh, table and column. And we might end, up, might end up using more than one table, so we got to think about uh, this again of naming our table and then the dollar sign telling it the column to look at, level. And then Z dollar sign gene, comma SD. Okay, now we have a new table D that is the standard deviation. So what you should do is uh, in the original uh, .csv, open it in Excel and calculate the standard deviation under each of the uh, column of uh, columns of ten numbers and double check. Right, always double check. Never just blindly trust the software. Software is probably doing it all right, but are you telling it to do things properly? Okay, so that double check is really important. You know, at any time these can be copied and pasted into Excel, um, and just you get uh, 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 you know don't just paste. Select there's a, a special one that'll put each of these in a, a separate cell um, in Excel. Anyway, just a little tip there and how to. Extract these into Excel if you want them to start doing some comparisons and things like that. Okay, so we have seen D. Now what we need is we need an SEM, standard error of the mean. And uh, again, I'm using uppercase. Remember that it's uh, case sensitive, so you always have to be aware of that. R is case sensitive. It gives you more flexibility. Function uh, of G. SD for table G divided by the square root of the n row, remember we calculated this, of G. Remember table G gives us the count of 10, so that's the standard deviation that we just calculated up here for each of these, um, divided by the square root of, the, uh, of n. But what we have done is we've assigned this function to SEM. So now when we use SEM and apply it, uh, like SEM of the table G, we now have the standard error of that. Okay. So notice that when we did the T apply, it alphabetized our columns. But the DDR1, I pulled these into Excel. The DDR1 uh, is right over here. This uh, worked out well when I pulled these into Excel and verified that uh, this number divided by the square root of 10 gave me this. Okay, so that's the function to go to our table G and do it. It won't work for if we apply this to Z. If we do SEMZ it won't work because the structure isn't correct. So we now need an SEM uh, Z and left arrow it's the less than and dash, if you have, uh, if haven't got on to that yet. Um, function, we'll say of z this time, uh, sd z divided by sqrt, open parentheses, and row uh, g. We need to refer back to g. So here we're referring to two different tables that are active. Remember, if we count the rows in z, we're going to get 220, right? Something like that. Uh, so we want to count the rows in G because that's the sample size of each group in table Z. And then we need one more close parentheses. Okay, now we have an SEMZ. Okay, let's generate a table of our error on the table Z. So E, left arrow, T, 
t apply z dollar sign level comma z dollar sign gene s s e m z right okay now we hit e we should have the standard error so for ddr1 uh, we have the same that we calculated up here 0.257 but notice now that they're alphabetized so when we use the t apply it alphabetizes our our columns so that I don't think that's too troublesome because when we graph the software is going to match um, these labels to put the error bars on them so now we have a table with our standard error of the mean we have a table with our uh, means and a table with our standard error of the means okay now we have to go through a series of commands that I got from the source um, to uh, create what's called a plot top that will be the maximum and the the individual I should have checked on the name so I could give them credit directly I don't take credit for all of this I give my sources anyway you can go and look and say thank you to that person uh, he just chose plot top for whatever reason um, you probably can call it anything you want the maximum of our mean table C is our mean plus uh, the uh, error standard error times 2 close so this calculates the tallest bar with the error uh, and you call it the plot top so this should push our our y-axis up to allow us to see that upper bar on there okay uh, now we want to create a bar centers okay so um, have, R needs to know where to put these error bars where to, what, where to center them so in, in doing this we create this bar centers uh, that will and utilize the bar plot function that, that calculates that uh, point on the column uh, and, uh, on the bar to where to put the uh, error bars okay so C is our table that we're going to plot right that's our means and uh, Y limit equals 0 comma plot top right and let's see We can close that, and I'm just going to, there's other things that he had in his. Uh, what did I do? YLAM equals C. There should be a C here. So I just did an up arrow to bring that last command back. So bar plot, open parentheses, C comma YLAM equals C, open parentheses, zero comma plot top, close parentheses close parentheses okay so that brought up our bar plot this one we we keep going we could have put the commands in there for the blue and all the other stuff uh, the labels and uh, things right now we just want to get the error bars on here okay so we keep that one active and now we need some we use these segments bar centers I hope I can get all this and I only get one more minute uh, C minus E comma bar centers C plus E this is our mean plus the error and comma LWD equals two double width uh, angle equals 90 and code equals 3 so I'm gonna run out of time <clears throat> that put just quickly our that in there I'm just going to copy and paste the arrows command you can stop the video to look at it and this will put the horizontal bars on there if I have time we have 15 seconds there's that and it gave us our error bars okay so again that's what we ended up with
with this 